Hello, my name is Randall Johnson, and we're going to be having another video. This time, I am with my friend, and he is currently the Chief Investment Officer of Sun Life, the largest life insurance company in the Philippines and the oldest. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess you're celebrating 125 years now. And mm -hmm. he's been in the financial services industry, mostly in investments, in the last 22 years. I know he looks young, but he's been there. <laughs> he's been uh, over 20, 22 years, and you have experienced uh, quite a... A lot of these challenges in the past few years and we're going to talk to you a little bit about that let me introduce uh the, the cio of sun life mr mike enriquez welcome mike well hi hi randall hi everyone <laughs> all right one one personal question how is it what's it like to be the same name of somebody so popular in, in the in the media <laughs> it has its pros and cons <laughs> i can tell you that <laughs> <laughs> But uh, more more pros because uh, there's a uh, huge name recall I think for one. <laughs> now when you when you look up your name, it's somebody else is gonna be up. There. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, it's not the, it's, that's not the Mike Enriquez. This is the investment Mike guy. And okay, so Mike, it's been uh, what? It's been more than sixty days now, no? In a week, about yeah. no? ten ten weeks. Ten weeks na, ten weeks na, yeah, ten weeks na. For us, it's ten weeks. Okay, so on, uh, work from home. Hindi na, to, hindi na to special vacation and everything. It's, it's, it's no, no, no. So how are you yeah. adjusting so far with the work from home? Uh, you know, I guess you can do a lot of the trades and the, you know, the investment side, but how about the other things? Well, uh, admittedly, at first it was uh, a, a quite a struggle. Um, the, the line between uh, work and home has really gone. It's gone. So, so you feel that you're working so much. I thought I had more time because I don't have to commute to work. Uh, the three-hour, two-hour traffic before is gone. Probably that's the beauty of it. But uh, otherwise, um, I feel that I've logged in a lot of Zoom calls <laughs> with with my colleagues, with with uh, with my team, uh, just to stay in touch. And uh, I think we're social people, so we always have to be in touch. So yeah, really, that's a big adjustment for us. And um, now it's all virtual. Yeah, but uh, nevertheless, at least we were able to cope, um, and I think we will in the foreseeable future. Um, I think we will have to remain uh, to be work from home. There's more of this now. So one of the yeah. people, I guess you work for a company that's a little bit more they're mm -hmm. quick into adjusting to all of these things, no? And that's correct. That's mm -hmm. Last question, personal question: How is it? How does your wife enjoy that you're in the house every day all the time? <laughs> Or yeah, that's that's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've heard a lot about um, uh, uh, relationships divorcing and uh, getting a lot of into conflict. Yeah, but surprisingly, at least both of us are quite busy. We have our own space yeah. in the house. My wife's a doctor, so she does a lot of these telecommuting now with her patients. She's a psychiatrist. Okay. So she's quite busy as well. In fact, she's more busy now because I think of the mental. <laughs> Um, health and um, a lot of anxieties being created because of this lockdown. So, so I guess I guess at works for us. <laughs> <laughs> so no more Zoom calls for you at night. Okay, we're going to talk about uh, you're the chief investment officer, and you know it's the largest insurance company. And for the last what the last ten years, a lot of people have been buying a lot of these VOLs, and mm -hmm. I guess a lot of the people who have VOLs today or mutual funds, to be fact, did not even experience 2008, the crash of 2008. So. For a lot Correct. of these uh, policyholders and investors of yours, and not just yours, many others, they na experienced the crash. Yan. So, mm -hmm. how how do you handle this thing? How do you, of course, they, some of them they do panic, or you know, the advisors will panic or whatever. How do you handle these things? Yeah, definitely, um, a lot of the new ones uh, have been panicking. Even the old ones have been panicking. Um, even for those who have experienced the 2008 global financial crisis, they've been panicking. Um, and more so, we've been seeing a lot of the panic, especially for those who have a shorter mindset. Okay. I think there are a lot of, um, a good number of our clients who would want to uh, have a shorter mindset rather than we all know that investing is somewhat long term. And uh, there's been that notion of that five year, um, and we have been struggling with that five-year notion that um, in over five years, if you hold your investment, uh, chances are that 
you will earn money. Okay. I think that's that's a, a wrong notion uh, to begin with. In fact, investing does not really entail a certain time frame. Okay. Usually, it's long term. It's it's a it's a word that's defined that uh, be defined with a lot of meaning. Um, long term for and it's re- quite relative for for longer than ten years. But for retail investors, long term might be as short as three months to to uh, five years. So depends on how you look at your investments. So that's why there are a lot of panics. Uh, and I think for one, they they think that they their the the investments that was uh, that they put in the money that they put in, they tend to compare it as well to a bank uh, product, mm-hmm. which again is uh, two different things: investments and bank products, bank time deposits. Why? Was my bank time deposit uh, still earning? In fact, compared to my investments where I should have been earning more. In fact, we've been getting a lot of these um, inquiries regarding, I should have just placed my money in time deposits in the last five years. It should have at least, I didn't earn so much, but at least my money is preserved. Rather than now, it's like down 20, 30% or even higher. Okay. So a lot of these things have something to do with education. I mean, the way they mm-hmm. done, uh, mm-hmm. the way, uh, with all due respect to our friends, mm-hmm. the way it was sold. So yeah. this, this is a perfect time to do. And this is what we're trying to do. We try to do education at this mm-hmm. time. Uh, you know, the, the term long term, if you look at the, the books, it's 10 years and above. No? But mm-hmm. for Filipinos, long term is one year. No? One year yeah, or even shorter. <laughs> Okay, so yeah. that's something that they, they have to problem. Of course, nobody nobody saw this. Did you see this coming? Did you see uh, the 2020 crash coming? No, definitely. It's, it's hard to, to do that. Um, yeah. There's no indication um, that it will spread. Okay. We've, okay. we've been getting news that uh, there's been this uh, new um, coronavirus in China last December, but nobody minded. Um, financial markets... <laughs> Yeah, until it was practically the perfect storm when it was Chinese New Year and everybody wanted to move out of uh, China and then that's why it spread. It's the tourists. And even China didn't really know that how contagious that was, right? So, but then again, we're here. Um, we're trying to manage the situation. And, um, but if, if you think about it, um, Financial markets usually would have a 10-year cycle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, if you've stayed in the market for quite some time, I think the recent, in recent history, we've seen the 1996-1997 Asian financial crisis. And then it happened, the global financial crisis back in 2008. Mm-hmm. And then 2019 this pandemic that uh, started it all. So I think if you, uh, if you look at history, it seems to be about a 10-year cycle that some black swan event can happen. Yeah. So you, the thing is, you're going to expect something to happen. That's why it's important mm-hmm. to really understand what you're getting into. And you know, the Correct. Stop. invest according to objectives, know your time frames, and you diversify. Nothing mm-hmm. wrong. But although I diversify, nothing is up, no? Yeah, <laughs> not not even your businesses or even properties. All right, but so, um, diversification in terms of diversification, in fact, the fixed income market is in fact up. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I think a lot of the investors in the Philippines look at investing as my bank deposit, time deposit, and then jump immediately to equities. equities. Well, I mean, there's then- nothing in between. Uh-huh. The one that's in between would be your um, balance funds, your multi-asset funds, your bond funds, okay. which definitely can provide a decent amount of return, but volatility definitely is a lot lower compared to your equities. And so I think that's something that we need to really emphasize. That there's 
And they're learning There's a lot of other opportunities in the middle <laughs> between time deposit and uh, equities. Yeah. And I guess they're learning it now. I mean, that's the reason why we're doing the show. So, Mike, you mm -hmm. sent me ahead um, one slide. I'm going to share it. And if you want to sure. discuss it a little bit. Yeah, bit. let's sure. Let's yeah. It. It's there. Okay, Mike. So, okay, long term investing amidst volatility, you put in, of course. This is what uh, I've been telling out. It's the straight, same old boring strokes, but these are the most mm -hmm. fundamental things you need to learn. So, you want to talk about Correct. it? Correct. Yeah, well, yeah, this is really we have to look back at um, our goals. Why did we start investing in the first place? Why didn't we just place our money in bank time deposit? Because we all know that um, over time, there seems to be something that we need to achieve. Mm -hmm. And those are our goals. And um, our goals can, can vary from uh, preparing for retirement, buying a big ticket item, traveling, um, or handing it over to our loved ones uh, in the end. So those are several goals. And I think once you start building your goals, that's the, the next step is really, okay, what would be your time horizon when you want to achieve these goals? Mm -hmm. So it can vary between as, as short as one year to as long as more than 10 years. And the third question probably is, okay, I know my goal, I know my time horizon, how much risk can I tolerate? Yeah, okay. So yeah. I guess it's very important, no? you should know what you're investing for, you should know the time horizon, there's matching, of course, you mm -hmm. don't use a long-term product for a short-term need and vice versa. And of course, right. Mike, this is where it is always overlooked, uh, especially in the last, what, five, six, seven years, the risk appetite, no? So people are so gung-ho with uh, equities. And that's not wrong. You and I, we invest in the equity market. Mm. You need to understand the, the risks involved. And for some reason, I guess, they never... I guess everything is just academic for them that I can lose money 20 30% until mm. they experience that it can really happen. And now is the time it's happening right now. So, yeah. Oh, Mike, you're, I'm assuming that your risk, you know, you're still relatively young. Your risk mm -hmm. is a little bit uh, uh, more on the high side. On the high yeah. side. How did you react when all of these things were happening? Well, given my experience, I I've seen markets fall even worse than what we've seen mm -hmm. recently. I think the Asian financial crisis, for those who have uh, experience and lived that, I think it's far worse from what we've seen recently. Um, Asian financial crisis was really an absence of liquidity. Mm -hmm. in the financial markets. Both equities, fixed income really went down. Unlike today, it's entirely different. Um, it was just, although it was just a financial market, and it was not really widely um, felt by the general public. Only those who were investors in the, in the markets uh, felt the Asian financial crisis. Okay. But now, the difference is the ordinary person feels this lockdown. Uh, you're losing your job. In the Asian financial crisis, you just lost some money in your investment. Right. And you your job. So that, those are the main differences probably. Um, yeah, but I, You know, during that time, you know, the, the amount of Filipinos invested was not that many as well. Correct, correct. Uh, that, uh, that, that big, you know, that's, that's, that's a, here's the funny part. When you're talking about the AFC, I, at that time, I was an employee of Sunlight. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 1997. So ah, the, yes, yes. And that's a, the thing that I think people don't understand is that, yeah, people remember 08, they forgot 97. You notice that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Re uh, reference on 08, but forgetting 97. I just uh, for the viewers, no, you know that the Philippine economy took a longer time to recover from '97 than yes. 1908, and so and the, the macroeconomic indices were different uh, during that time. So, mm -hmm. uh, but the, the good time? lesson to answer your question back then, we knew that mar markets are falling 10 to 15 percent in a day. Wow, 
in on hindsight, and I saw the physics go down as low as 850. Wow. And uh, policy rates, overnight rates by the BSP shot up to about 50%. Yep. So, no, time there, so, may double your money stuff again. Yeah, yeah so that's why, a, a, fast forward, of course, on hindsight, I should have invested. <laughs> but that, that is the, the fear. Um, but during that time, you want you wanted out. But mm -hmm. probably fast forward now, I should have invested a lot. So, and you can see now the, the behavior in the psyche that, of course, equities as an asset class can move up 20, 30, 40%, or even 50% higher. But it can also go down by the same magnitude. Because that is really the nature of the asset class. Okay. It's, so, important, it's important that you know what you're getting into. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So that's why the risk appetite is something that we, you really need to think about. Not just because the promise of a 20 a 30% upside potential for equities where I'm used to just time deposit and then I jump to equities because my neighbor is earning so much in equities. Yeah. Or somebody told me. Just Correct. For, for, the, for the interest of the viewers, before you make any investments, whether you buy a vehicle, a mutual fund or anything, you need to go through this questionnaire. Please, yes. yes. I mean, understand. Yeah. You know, there's a, I know a lot of people just, you know, <laughs> some banks or you know, they just answer it for you. We don't do yeah. that. Okay, don't do that. Don't let your advisor or your bank uh, do that for you. You do it and you see. You need to understand because if your risk profile is not there, it mm -hmm. will give you a lot of heartaches. No? And I guess um, times like this, you understand how important it is. All right, so um, moving to your next slide, Mike. You okay? Mm -hmm. Move to the next slide? Yeah, okay. So yeah, so, question so think, now, how long is long term? It's yes, so I think these are again the... The, the more relevant questions that you would want to ask once you're already invested. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we all know that the equity investing and like any other investment, it needs some time for it to grow. Um, for example, if you start your own business, you're lucky if your business can, can give you back um, in, the, in the next few years, right? Uh, yeah. There are only a few businesses right now that can give you a payback of less than a year. Probably illegal. In fact, <laughs> um, yeah, and probably illegal or some before um, I used to compare in equity investing to having a franchise. Mm -hmm. And the more popular franchises before like was McDonald's, Jollibee, during the early age, early stages when there's really not much Jollibee and McDonald's around. You would notice that a lot of people invested in the, for those of excess money in, in the franchise of a Jollibee or McDonald's. And the payback period back then was probably just two, three years. Yeah. You know now, it's about seven to 10 years. Wow. And for the same money. franchise, because uh, intensifying competition, um, goods and services are, are, much, uh, are much higher in terms of cost. So a lot of factors. So how long is long term? Well, depends on how you would want to view it based on your risk appetite. But as you mentioned, a textbook uh, definition, it should be longer than 10 years yeah. or even longer because you would want to let your money work for you. And so the next question is what is the difference between a strategic investment and a tactical investment but i think right now a lot of the folks or are, are, are the 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 investors now are more on that tactical side because you get rich quick yeah. right of course who doesn't want to get rich quick but at the end of the day it's really hard to do so even for us professional fund managers it's hard to make money in a market that is very uncertain. So we have strategic investments, meaning investments that we put in and we think that it will have realized its value over a certain course in time, a very long 
period of time. And these are usually value um, stocks, if we call it that. Value stocks would be the ones that have a high dividends and very low uh, price to book or uh, price to earnings. So meaning low valuation, but continues to give you decent amount of dividends. That's your strategic. Your tactical would probably be um, there's an opportunity in the market right now because um, the market went down artificially and then you would want to have a quick uh, in and out in the market. And I think right now, the perfect situation in a tactical. Tactical because a lot of the stocks right now have been sold um, way beyond its valuation. So you can easily have a tactical uh, investment there, but at the same time, you can also choose to be strategic, meaning hold it for a long term, especially for the companies that you think would continue to perform well for the company. Mike, I just like to uh, insert a little bit. So that's the role of the fund manager, right? I mean, to be able to make decisions like this. Uh, like if I'm a regular investor, I wouldn't know what to do when to move tactical and stuff like this. So that's mm. why my I would you know that's why I pay fund managers to do that for me. And the fund managers would would navigate between strategic and tactical. I'm sure you guys have been have been you know buying really good valued stocks today. Mm. Yes, it's crazy not to. And that's your job. I mean, if you are an investor, that's the job of a fund manager. I remember telling a lot of people, do not fund manage a fund manager. Mm. So I guess that's that's what, that's what your that's what your job is to be able to do this so that uh, when the recovery does happen, whether we're going to be or are you or whatever, mm -hmm. I know that yeah, as a fund manager, you're able to position certain things, and I can experience that in my funds. Am I mm -hmm. am I assuming right? Correct, correct, and you're you're correct in you in your um in your uh, view because for one, you know, equity markets in particular, since we're we're talking about equity markets, it's driven mostly on the tactical by sentiment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's really sentiment that drives it ahead of the economy. Um, so having said that, for example, if you're not invested now, you would probably lose an opportunity. For example, when tomorrow, tonight, there's a vaccine that's uh, been produced. Mm -hmm. Then sentiment will drive equity markets on a tactical basis higher. And you will so that's why this, it there. remains to be, uh, there's a lot of value in, in uh, doing um, strategic and tactical. Okay. Right. And that's your job, right? I mean, that's what, yes. <laughs> what the fund managers are for. And I don't know, for the last few years, a lot of people feel, uh, I do, I do my own stuff, but if you just to be for transparency, mm -hmm. all my money in funds that are in individual stuff. I'm joking. Yeah. I know maybe individual stuff, para lang may ma ikwento ako, no? but you know, <laughs> but basically, uh, my wife and I are most of our money are are mm -hmm. in funds uh, by form of an MF, you know, BOL or a UITM, mm -hmm. uh, and I then selected a few stocks, uh, and that's being strategic on my part. Uh, mm -hmm. That's important. I understand because uh, the role of the fund manager is very difficult. Uh, you know, I'm not saying you guys are emotionless, but you can do mm -hmm. it better than. Than those things, and that's the reason why we get into this. So that's being strategic. My as an investor, I'm being strategic so that you guys can do the tactical and all of these things. Yes. You know what leave the tactical to the fund managers, and um, we do a lot of uh, ho we do a lot of our homework. Um, yeah. We do fundamental analysis. We talk to each of the companies. Mm -hmm. um, we value them. We try to model um, and forecast their performance in order for us to have a very intelligent decision-making yeah. process on if we're going to invest or not. Okay. So, so that there's science in what you're doing, right? And that's yes, it's not just because we feel that this stock is something that we has gone down, we should buy it. Okay. Yeah. But there's a lot of science behind that before we, we pull the trigger. And I guess investors, policyholders should understand that mm. behind all of these things, this is what happens, no? So Guru, maybe Mike, one of these days we can do an unboxing for people to really understand. Um, yeah, I think that would be good. Um, an appreciation of uh, the yeah. things that we do <laughs> that's yeah. behind the scenes. <laughs> we unbox many things. Why don't we unbox these things? And, yeah. And, uh, and just for, for the interest of those who are watching, you know, these guys, before they buy or sell anything, 
they go through a very long process of checklist and stuff, but they have mm. to do it quickly. So I don't like. Yeah. That. Okay. So. But uh, because of technology right now, it's it's fast. Bloomberg um, helps yeah. us a lot in, in in all of the analysis and risk mitigation measures. But you still have to make that call. <laughs> Remember? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and that is uh, what makes it uh, yeah. nerve-wracking, especially mm. in like this. All right. So, um, strategic and tactical. If you are mm. let me just do a little bit as an investor, can I do all that? Mm. Can I do that? If I'm a policy holder, can I be? Yes, I bought a BUL or an MF through my advisor because you know I'm preparing for my long term, and you know markets have gone down, and I want to take advantage of the low nabs today. If I top up or add more to these investments, mm. I'm being tactical, correct? And I'm still, you know, I'm still doing a little of this. I'm still trusting you guys. So mm-hmm. it has to be a, that seems to be a, uh, a hybrid win-win formula for somebody like me correct. from outside. Okay. All right. So your next point, do you need to diversify? I think yes. that's the answer. And the, yeah. Yeah. Do we need to diversify? And um, clearly, there's several ways to diversify. For example, if you're a pure equity investor, there are a lot of ways to diversify out of several sectors or out of several names. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just probably for, for, the, for the benefit of the viewers, the PSEI, since we're talking about the index, it is comprised of only 30 shares. Okay. And, most of the, most, and those shares are probably controlled by six, seven companies concentrated on a few sectors, banking, property, telecom, um, power, um, just the name and some consumer names. And that's it. Um, so you need to probably diversify because some of the sectors may not perform as well given the cyclical nature of the economy. So you always need to balance it off. At least that was on a, on a PSEI or an equity portfolio. But if you would want to enlarge that, if you look at global um, indices like the S&P 500, there are more sectors that are listed. Yeah. Um, and if you think about it like healthcare, um, um, IT, we don't have those, but those sectors are the ones that are performing now. So maybe you can also look to diversify offshore Mm -hmm. because that's the only time that you can partake of other types of sectors which may not be present here in the Philippines but can offer a lot of value elsewhere. And then going out of the asset class, you can also look to diversify in other asset classes. And for investors out there, equity is not the only investment you can make. Yes. There are bonds, there's real estate, and there are other alternatives, which and probably we won't talk about. And we will have REITs. And we have REITs. Um, yeah. That's your closest way to a liquid real estate investment. Yeah, because we're gonna have, so we're gonna have more options. It's really important for us to understand what we're getting into, the, the need for diversification, not just in equities and all these things. So Mike, I have this question that is always, it's a very Western question that we know the answers, but I guess I want it to come from you. There's always this thing that you're better, invest, you're better invested in an index as against an actively managed fund because, you know, mm. blah, blah, blah. And they, cite, they would cite US, US stocks, no? I mean, mm. what, what can you say about that? Well, that's a good question. In fact, that's that debate between active and passive management. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing that's um, going on for passive are the fees. Fees are very um, small for passive investing. But here in the Philippines, uh, as uh, going back to my point, the I mean, passive investment is just the PSEI, yeah. which is just 30 shares. Okay. Remember, the Philippine equity market has about 220 plus names that are listed. And there are other names that offer a lot of value that may not be part of the index for the simple reason that they're not big enough in but terms of market value. capitalization and in, in terms of market value, market capitalization. So 
there goes the active managers, which, of course, for us, obviously, we would want to highlight active management over passive investing or buying into index funds. Active investing can entail going out and taking advantage of other names in the in the market that can offer the same value or even higher. Yeah. If you a lot, these are your second liners um, that you always hear that may or even your third liners that may potentially become second or even blue take up names in the future. Right. And these are the names that you can invest in outside of the index if you enter into active investments or active fund management. Um, and for us, especially on, on this COVID-19 uh, situation, for example, if the market recovers, yes, the PSE will recover because it's a macroeconomic problem. But there may be some instances where some stocks may recover faster than the others. So there, by active investing, may probably be an advantage because we can allocate more into those names that we think can recover faster than the others. So it's pros and cons, um, but of course, active management, because we're very active on it, the fees are higher. Okay. So my, this, this uh, just a little bit of my understanding, no? uh, and I got this not just from you, but from even from other fund managers and you know, people I know investing. What, what we're saying is, because of the pandemic, because of the decline, and there's going to be recovery going to happen, whether it's a VU or whatever, mm -hmm. it's going to be recovery. What they're saying is an actively managed fund will outperform an index mm -hmm. when the recovery happens. I mean, do you... That is, that is our aim. Yeah. And that is always uh, the goal of the fund manager. And all, all fund managers are gauged on their performance based on outperformance uh, okay. from the index. So, and, and because there's a, when you look at historical data of, of, of all our funds, mm -hmm. there were only just a few, few, few times, mm -hmm. in, let's say in a few years, that the index actually outperformed actively managed. Of course, you can have different kinds of actively managed. Yes. Funds, but, uh, yeah. You know, there's the alpha level, there's the, mm -hmm. uh, the broad equity type. Mm -hmm. of, uh, but, so I guess uh, we, uh, what I'm saying is there's only a few times that the index actually mm -hmm. did outperform. As yeah. a, Compare it, let's say, to the, to the U.S. Because, as you said, if you look in the S&P, which is an index, what you're talking about 500, 500 companies yeah. here, which are more yeah. well-represented. If you look at the index, there goes your Ayala's, your Henry C's, and, you know, there's mm. just a few companies playing around uh, with that. So, I guess uh, it makes sense. Or you can, just like diversification, you can put some of your money in an index and put mm -hmm. some of your money in an activity. Manage funds personally. That's what I do. My index account. But you know, I'm still yeah. That's that's a that's a very good observation. In fact, um, a lot of uh, there's a lot of factors that contribute to why it's harder for active managers to outperform on a on a on a re, on a short term or medium term basis. But over a long term, probably ten years or so, you can see a lot more outperforming. But number one are the fees. Uh, management fees are quite steep. Second would be friction costs or uh, broker fees. Broker fees are quite uh, expensive here in the Philippines. And uh, for the PSE, if you're watching, uh, we've been lobbying um, <laughs> since I think the Philippines has the highest um, broker fees. And that's not only in the region, but in the world. That's why we're not growing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've been lobbying. Um, I think we're, we still are at 25 basis points. That's very one high. Way. Yeah. It's very high. And um, for some other countries in Asia, I think it's already negotiated. Okay. Hope, we hope, hope uh, we'll have that. Uh, calling on uh, the PSE. Okay. So, <laughs> very important. Because, you know, we need to be able to create scale. And, and you know, better time to do, yes. it, do it now, right? So, uh, they need to diversify. You can do it. Uh, personal question, Tom, Mike. I have a chunk of money in an index fund. Uh, should I transfer it now to a more actively managed fund? Say, same I think fund manager. I would probably uh, caution you there and probably just uh, recommend you to add more. 
Okay. Let the index fund stay there. Uh, and um, so that we look, if you would want to add, probably try an actively managed fund. Okay, okay. I guess that's what you want to do with. Don't touch what you have. If you want to add mm -hmm. advantage, you put it in a... Yeah, so... And, and honestly, I'm not a big fan of uh, fund switching and I've been recommending people. For some reason, a lot of this fund switching are happening now. Uh, and I guess it's been, I don't know where they get the advice, but you know, it's very crazy. And especially switching your funds from equities to bonds at this time. Yes, right? correct. No. You know, that's the, wrong, that's the, it's a wrong move right now for, for one simple reason. Equity markets are near all time, near recent lows. Mm -hmm. in, interest rates are near recent lows. Ooh. If those reverse, then you'll be double whammy. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you guys heard it from Mr. Mike Enriquez. Not a good idea to uh, switch at this time. So right. It's hard because uh, I think for retail investors, what we always Yeah. Sorry. Because we've observed retail investors, they always tend to buy when there's euphoria in the market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then he in fact to purchase or to buy. And we've noted that our volumes of subscription tend to be higher when the markets are higher. Okay. It should be the other way around. Why is that so? I think it's more of the, the sentiment again. Um, a lot of retail investors are doing uh, or just following the bandwagon effect. Okay, sorry, Mike. Uh, I'm gonna edit that out. So, I'm gonna edit that sure. out. So, I'm gonna take it back from. Take it back from. I know from. So, sentiment. Everything's about the sentiment at this point in time. So it's gonna reverse. You're saying it's gonna reverse. I think it will reverse. Um, once we, I think as early as. We see GCQ uh, from ME uh, from uh, the modified ECQ. Once we do GCQ and we see a little bit of economic activity, you can see a lot of positive sentiment going back to the market. Even if earnings will not, I mean, of course, earnings gonna get a hit, but that's already priced in. You guys have priced in the, the earnings. A lot, a lot of already been priced in. Um, but then again, you know that sentiment moves the market faster than the actual economy. Okay, so that's, 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 that's the thing that we need to uh, caution. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. Very, very helpful for all of us. Uh, when we say priced in, it means that it's adjust na yung presyo. Nag-adjust na, na-reflect na, bumagsak na. Bumagsak na, so uh, because everybody's anticipating, you know, earnings to a great degree, um, you know, influences price in a perfect mm. way. But now that you know prices, earnings will go down. Of course, any other, all companies will will experience a decline in earnings, if not even negative. That's why mm -hmm. it's being the price are also going down. That's priced in. Okay, you heard it from this video. Okay, now this is a nosebleed type of a slide. <laughs> <laughs> no, which basically I can say that it's nice. No, but it's uh, this video is very about. You know, my videos should always be about educational and you know. Mm. Yeah, uh, guys like you help people understand. Okay, let's talk about your slide. So uh, I just wanted to um, show your in investors, the investing public, about the cycle of the market. And uh, so it, it can move from bull market, as what we have been always hearing. I think recently it's all bull. Mm -hmm. and, but recently it has gone down to a bear market. Um, so 
And I think the important thing to, to note on this slide is the emotions associated with the market. And as I mentioned, uh, we've observed that our clients have been entering markets during excitement phase. And this is, if you look at the, the picture here, excitement phase is meaning it's all towards the peak. Mm -hmm. We've seen more subscriptions when markets are higher than when markets are lower. And we tend to see more redemptions when markets are lower. Reverse. It, it's the worst time to do it. It should be the reverse. So, and on the bull market, of course, you, nobody can predict the peak. But if, as what I, uh, we always observe, if, you, if your barber talks about the stock market, then you have to sell. <laughs> because there's a lot of excitement and overconfidence already in the public. I think it's overdone. Yeah, and I guess, so go to Mike, and you, then, you've been also seeing... As, as the market falls, you'd see panic. I think on the panic phase, that when you see a lot of people sell. Okay. Hello, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So Mike, I know you've been, yeah. you, you've been seeing it, uh, the proliferation of Facebook groups, Facebook pages, all about the stock market. Everybody's an, an expert. That's what mm. happened. You had a bull market for a long time. Everybody mm. comes out to be a an expert until now. Until yes, yeah. So, but you know, Mike, I'm a, I'm a been doing this for a long, long time. I've uh, been investing, and I, you know, analyzing all of these things. That's why I rely with you know guys like you. It's, it takes too much for me to think. That's why what I practice is I just cost average over the years, over mm -hmm. 10, 20 mm -hmm. years. And is that is that a better way of doing? things if you're a retail an investor you know you just i just i just want to have money when i'm old so what i do is keep on buying every time you know on a regular basis on a monthly basis on a quarterly basis is that something that can you know and then there there of course since i'm doing it over a long time i've experienced the bulls and the bear is that a strategy mm -hmm. that is worth doing or is that something you would advise against i i think again you would have to go back to your investment philosophy is what we call it okay. or your goals or your goals for for a retail investor you go back to your goals have you achieved your goal is this the right asset that can bring you to your goal and then you do reassessment i, I think as what you've described you you try to reassess your portfolio from time to time mm -hmm. is this portfolio still the right portfolio that can bring me to my goal based on the, the performance of the current performance of the markets and if not, then you probably can look at trying to make some changes okay. in order for you to be able to make it more effective for your goal. Okay. So you always have to go back to your goal. Okay. So very important. You need to understand. Uh, that's why I haven't done much redemption despite of what's happening. Mm -hmm. Sheri Kolang, do you know that I have a Sun Life Bond Fund? Uh, that's been there since 2003. <laughs> <Diba>? Wow. <laughs> so, katagal. Why am I not touching it? One, it's diversified. It's to mm -hmm. diversify me. Two, I'm, I plan on using it in retirement and I'm not retired. Yeah. So, why yeah. would I be in a rush to do it? So, and then the key is just to keep on adding. You know, just keep on adding and keep on adding. And then maybe in times like this, if you have the extra cash, you may want to add a little bit more, take advantage of these times. You can be a little bit more tactical, but still mm -hmm. stay within the frame of you know certain VOL, certain funds that you are using. Okay, so and you know, you know, Randall, um, since you mentioned the bond fund, mm -hmm. did you know that last year, end of 2019, mm -hmm. the bond fund returned much higher than the equity fund? And you will see years like that, right? I mean, you've seen that. Yes, you can see years. Um, as what we have been saying, the bond fund earned equity-like returns, and the equity fund returned <laughs> bond-like returns. So it was the reverse. So you can probably see some years that are like that. That's why there's that importance of diversification in asset classes. 
Very important. So, so you know, this is going to happen again and again and again over your investment period. If you are 30 years old today, you started to invest in funds, bought some stock or whatever it is, chances are you're going to be investing the next 20, 30 years. And you're going to experience mm. a lot of these things time and time and again. So very important. Uh, you understand what you're getting into. And you know that there's, the volatility is always going to be part of the game. The more, the yeah. more you accept that, you know, you can sleep better at night. Rana, how can you sleep better at night? Seeing that some of your money is, uh, I've lost, I don't know, I've lost money in the past. I was able to regain it anyway. So, you know, uh, yeah. and, you know, I'm not being foolishly optimistic, but we understand that markets go through emotions and go through cycles as well as the economy, right? Mm -hmm. So this, okay, yeah. fear of FOMO, fear of missing out. Huh? So millennial, Mike, you're a millennial pala, no? So, Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so I borrowed this slide from, from PIMCO. Uh, PIMCO is one of the, the largest um, fund, global fund managers. And I, I find this slide uh, very timely. And because a lot of the investors right now tend to panic. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, shift out in order for them to preserve whatever they, they've uh, earned uh, from, for the fear that it might continue to go down. And mm -hmm. this is a good chart of, um, I think, the S&P, uh, the decision-making process, when you're uh, losing money. Um, on high markets, you're very happy. Um, but when markets are down, you can't take it anymore, you want to go out. And then after you exit, you see markets falling then you'd realize, okay, I did the right decision. And then suddenly markets start to rebound. Okay. And that's the hardest part to do is to re-enter the market when you already have cut your losses. Because there are a lot of emotions. Why would I enter again? I've lost. And then you'd say that, okay, when markets start to, no, this rally won't last. This is just something um, or a relief rally. And then, before you know it, it's already back to its peak. And it's just probably six months after or one year after. And you're not invested. And you're not invested. And you lost money. Okay. If you just waited for six to a, six months to a year, probably you have been better off just sitting it out there. So sometimes fear, the fear of missing out, is something um, emotions can dictate our decisions. So it seems to me at the, at the end of the day, you're one of the greatest emotion to have is patience. Correct. You understand that you're investing, again, going back to your objectives. You're investing for what? Investing for the long term. You have 20 mm -hmm. years to go, 15 years to go. There's so many things that can happen. Your money can grow. And mm -hmm. you understand your risk tolerance, as, as what Mike was saying. Mm -hmm. You understand that this thing is going to be part of the course then you're going to be okay. Then you can still sleep better at night. I guess patience is very important. And I guess also uh, understanding and trusting that the fund managers has a thorough process in buying and selling certain things so that in the end, they are gauged by you know, how successful they are in managing the funds. Then that should work for your advantage. Yeah, okay, so these are, these are all good uh, reminding our clients. So again, uh, you know, again, so final points, okay? Yeah, so again, as I mentioned, I think for us, for investors, you need to always stay the course in order to achieve your goal. Yeah. And then have checkpoints down the road just to, to see if your current allocation continues to be aligned to your goals. Second, this diversification always works. Um, there's a lot of other asset classes between your deposits and equities. You have to look at those to diversify a portfolio in order for you to mitigate any or lessen the volatility. And I think for the last point, we have to always keep on learning, including us. Mm -hmm. Even us professionals, we continue to learn. We continue to discover things. This COVID-19 is a learning experience for all of us. Nobody has expected the extent of the damage that has been done. 
and it's something new and we go back to this probably 10 years down the road now mike following that learning what did you learn from this covid experience as a seasoned fund manager managing the largest life insurance uh, managing the funds of the largest life insurance company we're talking about billions here what is what did you learn in all this covid thing there are a lot but probably the most valuable mm -hmm. is um in tagalog pwede naman palang gawin maraming pwede pala na before you realize kala mo hindi pwede such as what like for example um doing zoom mm -hmm. before we weren't expecting that um, the investment team will be able to effectively trade offsite for a prolonged period of time we weren't expecting for example that um there would be a digitally assisted selling that can happen okay pwede pala marami palang pwede na kala natin before hindi pwede work from home is one of pwede that. pala yung online banking to be used on a regular basis that is safe okay before so, everybody's fearing pwede pala to work from home pwede palang walang traffic and uh, effectively continue to work from home mm -hmm. so a lot and you build from it that um, there are a lot of things that are possible that previously you wouldn't even fathom that it's possible and i guess in this new industries will come up from these things yes yeah. of course so very good because Keep learning very, you know might very very helpful uh you know if you're an investor of sun life whether you have a mutual fund or a bol uh, I hope this video has helped you. By the way, I'm not from Sun Life. I'm just friends with them. I did work with them uh, many, many. There are a lot of people, I, I left 2003, you know, what year is it? <laughs> 20, 20, 17 years ago. Yeah. But really, uh, there's, there's a lot of these things are happening right now, and it's good. Uh, you heard it from your CIO himself on how he does it. So, I said, if we are going to lose, they will lose. because you monitor markets, even global yeah. markets. Yeah. There's always skin in the game. You know? yeah. Again, this is uh, very helpful for you to understand. Do not panic. Very important. Uh, understand what you're getting into. And I guess if you're a policyholder of Sunlight or any other life insurance company, you talk to the advisor, you talk to call, to call center, before you make any rash decisions with your policies and mutual funds, it's good to talk about it. Talk, there are people that's going to help you. Uh, they're going to guide you, um, redeeming, uh, fund, uh, uh, fund switching, all of these things. I would advise against it unless, I guess, wala ka pera, pera talaga. Kung wala kang pera, why did you invest to begin with? And all of these things. So take it everything with a grain of salt. So my final words for our listeners. Well, uh, and some again, listeners are your advisors as well. So this is a yes. perfect time to manawa again sa kanila rin. Okay, so well, for number one, for for our clients, um, rest assured that um, your funds are safe. The all of the assets that back the liabilities continue to be safe. For uh, we can manage the funds remotely and effectively. Ever since we've started, we've invested in technology to be able for us to manage the funds effectively even on a remote basis for the advisors please continue to handhold our clients because our clients are the ones that are most important for us and in times like these that we need to reach out to our clients even more handhold them educate them on what's happening in the markets locally and globally we the that my team always provides daily updates written updates on a daily and a weekly basis we have webinars take advantage of all those in order to communicate those to your clients in order for us to be able to ensure that we are working for our clients 24 7. very good um sun life has a lot of uh information instagram uh uh instagram and facebook you just you know you can check a lot of the data there details if you can't find your advisor you can go to the call center uh, and again, uh, here's your, your, your chief investment officer. I have some money, just for transparency. I have some money with Sun Life. 
uh, I get to sleep well at night, you know, I, I guess we all will take losses. But again, uh, just to know if you have some extra funds today, you might want to consider. But think about it, you always invest according to your objectives, to your time frames, to your goals, and consistent with your risk. Thank you very much, Mike. I hope we can do another run. Uh, maybe we can do some form of an unboxing. Uh, sure, I think that will be good. That will be good as a form of uh, keep, uh, continuous learning for your audience. Yes. Thank you very uh, much. Thanks for inviting. Um, happy as always uh, for uh, Randall Thompson, of course. God bless you. <laughs>